It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are beginning where we left off. Chopper, who is right here on this map, faced with the Queen Dragon Lot. Ooh. Or Dragon Queen Lot. Uh, she's not the. Well, what's the difference between a Dragon Queen and a Queen Dragon? Dragon Queen would be the Queen that happens to be a dragon. And the queen dragon would be the head of the dragons, the monarch of the dragons, the female monarch of the dragons. So this is dragon queen. Um, so she's the queen of the dragons. And uh, it's Chopper's turn. Chopper is right in front of this dragon, and he has to decide uh, whether he wants to go for it and try and take the, the dragon out with his surrogate, the ghost of Tovard. Um, or whether he wants to try to just run away and do something else. Um, the decisions, he, he's kind of already made the decision. He put the dragon, or the ghost there, and I think now it's time for the ghost to strike. All right, and here we have our battle lines um, set up. How this works is each side has three lines, potential lines of, of forces. Now we can see here, Chopper only has one line, and Dragon Queen Lot has two. Um, so this far back line, this is magic line. So what you can do in the magic line is you can attack with your magic any one person and they would defend their magic. Right? This middle line is con line. <coughs> so that's kind of where you would be taunting the people or trying to confuse them. This is the line you just kind of are talking from. Neither side has chosen to, to put anyone there. Um, this front line is the, the sheer battle line. And you know, it may be wise, may have been wise for the Dragon Queen lot to put someone back here for that, but I'm just going by playing it, playing her sort of as um, a neutral party. So she's not really controlled by anyone, even though I've been making a few decisions for her. Um, so they're just going to go with the line of whatever is highlighted in red, and so they're all fighting. Um, it may have been wiser for the Nori mercenaries to be here in Khan, because then they could maybe mess with someone in this front line and take them out of the battle. Um, and with if you get a good enough Khan roll, you can actually get them to switch sides too, which is kind of a fun element um, to this battle. So Chopper has just everyone in his front line here. He's going for a straight up assault. Um, the Ghost of Tovard has revealed two items here. A chainmail and death maul. The death maul increases his fighting and would increase his magic, um, but mainly his fighting is going to go up. His fighting is also going to go up more because there's a Valerian unit there. The ghost was, um, I guess, Tovard. Torvard? Is it Torvard? It's hard to tell if that's an I or an R. When Torvard was alive, I think maybe the Valerians or the Kadukians caused him problems. So. Um, so that's going to give him a, a plus four total. So he's got ten fighting ability, which is very good, and plus four hit points because of his chainmail. So he's in pretty good shape. Um, so he's got a, a fairly strong line here. Uh, he also has these orcs. Orcs, um, their fighting's going to go up after the dragon queen uses magic. So that's that's really good. He's pretty well set up. We'll see how things go down. All right, so the Dragon Queen lot chose the Ghost of Tovard as her target. She destroyed his chainmail and hurt the ghost. Um, now there's going to be a big fight between all these people here, and things aren't looking too good for the dragon. I think I f did the counting. It's 42 to 25. Um, so these guys are likely all toast. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so i got to roll a d6 for each side, and they'll add that to their total. So they have 44 to uh, 27, I'll work out the damage. And Dragon Queen chose to take most of the damage on these two units, which are no longer with us. Nori Mercenaries had to take two. Now she's going to try to escape. Um, sticking around is just not wise. And she can escape. All of her people can, can go. Um, she's going to go in a random direction. Five, right there. So she's heading... Where was she in Basilia? So she's going into the water. That's interesting. I don't know if if he can actually follow her in the water. That was pretty clever. All right, so Chopper managed to route pretty easily uh, with the help of the ghost of Torvard, um, the Dragon Queen lot. 
That was not without cost, however. Um, so he's sort of, you know, you can kind of, in, in since the ghost's units were all turned, turned face up, we know that uh, Chopper's true identity is either with the little prince here or in Pelagros. So I don't know that the others are going to take advantage of that. No one's really that close to town, but um, whichever place it is, he's, he's not very well guarded right now. Sweet Pea's turn. Sweet Pea intends to have a revenge. She got this unit last turn. Um, Greasebrug the Orc Shaman. Um, and like orcs in general, shamans aren't, can't use magic in a conventional way. They can defend against magic, though. As a blessing from ancestors, Greasebrug increases his adventure group's con and combat by one if the enemy uses magic while he is present. So I'm going to interpret this to mean that Greasebrug, the orc shaman, can't normally use magic. He, this, this score here is just for defense. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe he can curse people? Since he, could, he has a blessing, maybe he can do a curse. Um, anyway, regardless, Greasebrug is going to try and take out the rebels. He is Sweet Pea's agent of revenge. So, he's going to use his magic score. How can we rationalize this? Um, I think he's going with some rebel, rebel hair. I think he's just, he's going to do some like creepy gestures and hope that that scares them off and try to dispel them and then um, he looks pretty, and then he's going to scratch them uh, from behind, like, and, and just, like, hunt them all down one by one. All right, so, pretty good chances, but I thought that about that other one, too, um, the magician. That's eight to two. Rebel hideout is totally done. She gets this whenever card and a little bit of success. Honey Pot is going to move towards Pulvis, and I'll have to do some draws. And then Oren is probably going to do some recruitment. I can do that right now. And that's six plus nine, just gets one. So Honeypot went into Pulvis. I was about to just attack everyone. That was Sweet Pea's plan. She, Honeypot's got a full group and didn't want to um, waste the time to try to recruit because you just have to lose people. Uh, however, these eerie shepherds came up. These eerie shepherds are very good at movement. Um, they can move through mountains like it's nothing. And everyone else, uh, you know, unless it says otherwise, they can use pretty much all their movement, I think, to go into mountains, but then they have to leave the same way they came. These eerie shepherds and some dwarves and a few, maybe some other guys, can just move through mountains. And so she managed to recruit it, um, gave up her Kadukian peasant, um, instead, they you know don't have the greatest stats. Pretty good at conning. Um, normally, Kadukian peasants would have gone back into the deck the way I play. Um, I think the rules say you're supposed to discard them, but they're not dead. So, um, but since there are Kadukian peasants already here, I think they joined up and they're all drinking together. So they're all going to be um, in pull this next turn if she she decides to continue her assault. On, I think that's probably the capital of Largos. There's two towns in Largos, and it's the bigger one. What does it say? It's the first fortress, blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 mysterious. Thick mural walls, tall towers, and plenty of escape. Well, it's easy to escape there. I don't know if it's the capital. After Snugbug got a couple more items um, and discarded some, he's still at his limit, just looking for something. Dragon Queen Lot, she took refuge in Bugged, was unable to make any sort of recruitments there. She's thinking about just flying out of there. I gave her the ability to just ditch her army if she wants and try to regroup um, if she wants to. She doesn't quite want to leave yet because she's hoping she can maybe get a shot at um, Chopper. Uh, she is a little worried about the, prince, the little prince's army. Um, and there's also the ghost right here, who she's already tangled with and lost against. But um, she at least has a turn, she figured, because the ghost can't go across the water, and these woods would slow him down, so, so he couldn't get to her anyway. But neither the Dragon Queen nor I um, counted on the little prince having the eerie shepherds. They can move right through the mountains, as I've already said, right in a bugged. And Chopper is following up on the dragon. So Little Prince will go there. I gotta finish setting him up and I'll come back. This is actually a pretty dangerous move by Chopper. 
Um, his forces aren't near as good, the little prince's forces aren't near as good as the ghost of Torvard's forces were. See, they're kind of weak. He, you know, he has some decent con units in there, but he likes to send them straight up. He's hoping to just crush the dragon before she can get away. Um, you know, this is a case I maybe could have played it to try to con the mercenaries out of the way and then just overwhelm the dragon, but he's just going straight up. And that's the way Chopper likes to do it. And Chopper, you know, Chopper's had a lot of uh, combat success, right? Through Betrayal at the House on the Hill, he was the hero. And then um, slaying the dragon. And here, you know, he's he's already routed the dragon once, so he's, he's, he's smelling blood. Um, but it's magic time. I don't know. I, I think it's simultaneous, so... Or maybe the attacker goes first. I gotta figure out turn order and they'll be right back. Yeah, so here could the attacker does get to go first. Um, so he's gonna go with the little prince. Hmm. Little prince is going to doesn't really want to attack the dragon queen a lot, because he's going to do magic on the Nori mercenaries. Hopefully take the mercenaries out, and then his troops can just attack destroy the dragon queen. Um two that's not very good the mercenaries get two so nothing happens and now here's where he might be in trouble the dragon queen is going to use magic on the prince the prince can only be killed by magic um, or magical weapons so this could be bad um, the dragon does have an advantage that's a 10 against the prince's five the prince is gone um, and so is the prince's item I think I'm going to say they get to fight on, though, regardless of their leader. Maybe I should check on that. I'll check on that. I'm <laughs> doing a lot of, like, just little bursts and then coming back. All right, so we have 19 here against 7. They could they could punch through to the dragon. Here we go. And they have 23. 7 has 12. Um, so that is going to be a difference of 11. Um, this guy's got 5 off. So that's six more goes through, and that's going to be enough to take care of the dragon. This is one reason it's fun for me to um, play through these games and develop stories through these games rather than just in my head. Because it's unexpected, I didn't think it would go this way. I, I thought the dragon would be this fearsome thing that, um, you know terrorize the characters as they were trying to do other things. It really, it just ended up being a distraction for Chopper. Um, Chopper did have to sacrifice quite a lot in order to beat the dragon. The whole, the little prince is gone, as well as the little prince's um, stack of units are have all abandoned ship. Um, yeah, I'm going to say they're probably all gone. I also had a, a whole other story planned. And I think I'm going to put this item in there too. Whole other story kind of idea is something to do with the ghost. Um, and then the ghost, the ghost and the dragon. There was going to be some sort of interaction there. Which I don't want to go too much into because I might have some other idea. But the ghost didn't end up even having anything to do with the dragon in the end. The ghost just kind of chased the dragon away. And then the little prince came in and finished it off. Uh, interesting story of sacrifice, I guess. Um, unexpected, but interesting.